Hello, this is Michael Owens with Here Come the Irish, and you're watching the Two Irish Brothers Show. Go Irish! How's it going, everyone? I am ND Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And yes, again, like we said in the last video, you guys are not seeing things. Ben is sitting right along beside me, and we are ready to do our preview for the big one. Shamrock Series this week in Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. Notre Dame will be taking on the Wisconsin Badgers. Now, yep. why is that one significant? Basically one reason. Jack Cohn, our starting quarterback, it is his former team. Yep. So revenge game will he have a chip on his shoulder i'd like to think he will yes yep it's a revenge game for jack cone um and you know i mean a lot of people from illinois considered notre dame their team and it's that uh wisconsin illinois rivalry if you will in a way so uh, it'll be a lot of fun and of course notre dame's history with big 10 teams so yeah well and there is a few connections between notre dame and wisconsin the first one being barry alvarez who was yep. their athletic yep. director yep. he was our i think our defensive coordinator on that 88 national championship team but also one of the four horsemen harry stool yes, that is true yes i ha forgot about that harry yeah. stool was their head coach way back when so yes. there, there's some connections between these two schools now this will be notre dame and wisconsin's first meeting since i believe 1960 which, yes. in which the Irish came out victorious in that one. And also a couple things. As you guys can see, um, the Bears game is about to get underway, Bears versus Bengals. So I'm, you might see me turn and checking out things with that. <laughs> but the second thing, let us take this time before we get going to hear a word from our sponsor. I do enjoy drinking Guinness at a tailgating party. Yes, and I've discovered that the local custom is to wear cheese on your head. So, to fit in, I brought along some hunks of Limburger. Limburger cheese heads? Brilliant! <laughs> Brilliant! I'm not so sure we're fitting in. I smell feet. Whatever the occasion, drink responsibly. Brilliant! <laughs> you see, it's only fitting. It is brilliant because it's only fitting that, you know, Wisconsin... Green Bay, Cheeseheads, that American, was fitting. America's Dairyland, yeah. Oh, yes. So we thought that'd be a good one for this week's game. In the Guinness portion, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I Irishmen, yeah. we, lo we love yeah, Guinness. Guinness. Notre Dame sponsored with, with Guinness now, so yeah. Absolutely. So, anyway, let's get right into the game. Uh, at Soldier Field, last year these two teams were supposed to meet up in... Uh, Soldier Field. What'd I say? You said Soldier Field. I said I was pointing to the TV. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Soldier Field. <laughs> oh, of course, first pass by Andy Dalton is incomplete. Anyway, <laughs> trying to stay focused here, people. I really am. But anyway, um, we were supposed to play this game last year up in Lambeau Field, and that yep. game's going to happen at a future date. But, yep. of course, as we all know, COVID, COVID messed things up. Yeah, COVID messed a lot of things up last year. Um, but uh, anyway... Uh, I may, I may be up in Chicago for that. I may not. It just depends. I don't, I don't know, but uh, not to go to the game, but just to watch it at a nearby bar or something. But, uh, anyway, breaking down the, the Badgers, uh, one and one on the season, they started off the season with that really hard fought game against Penn state Yep. and they're coming off a pretty decent victory over Eastern, I believe Eastern Michigan, Eastern believe. Michigan. Yep. Yep. yep Eastern yep, yep. Michigan, 34, 17. Yep. Um, so uh, obviously, let's let's talk about the quarterback situation at Wisconsin. Graham Mertz, the one who replaced Jack Cohn at Wisconsin after yep. after Jack got hurt um, in that game against Eastern, Eastern Michigan, he was fourteen to seventeen, one hundred forty one yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Yep. So, Ben, what's your what are your thoughts on on Graham Mertz? I do believe and think that Graham Mertz is actually a very overrated quarterback. I think Wisconsin gets a lot more credit than they deserve and i don't think this wisconsin badgers team is as good as everybody is advertising really so you're going to start some controversy in this yeah. video which we yeah. really don't do a whole lot of but yeah. there you go you're not you made it clear you are not a graham mertz fan yeah uh <laughs> myself i have no opinion either way um i'm just focusing focusing on our quarterback jack cone playing the best football that he absolutely can 
But uh, this is a Wisconsin team that is historically known for their ground and pound offense, a lot heavy running game, but they've been starting to really open it up in the passing game the, these yeah. past few years, really get it going. Yeah. But like Sean said, a very heavy ground and pound team. Um, they do have that offensive firepower at times with the wide receivers. But I, I mean, you know, in the Eastern Michigan game, four different running backs, four touchdowns, um, giving them the 34 points that they scored um, against uh Eastern, Eastern Michigan. Michigan, sorry. So, yeah, I mean, and this is something that the Notre Dame defense is going to have to key in on, you know, is is stopping this this potent uh, Badger run game. I mean, we've seen it historically. You know, Wisconsin is a ground and pound team. We've seen Melvin Gordon come out of this program, who currently plays for the Broncos. Um, uh, who is the other guy I'm trying to think of? Uh, Ball. Right. Uh, Monty, Monty Ball came from their program a few years ago. So, I mean, you know, the list can go on. He didn't on. He didn't do much in the NFL, but uh, yeah. Heisman winner Ron Dane, he came out of Wisconsin. So I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, yeah, Wisconsin has, and justifiably so, I mean, it's a pretty snowy area. So when it snows, I mean, you got to be able to, to run the ball. And passing is a hard thing to do. So, so yeah, but the Notre Dame defense has to key in on this. And this is another step. You know, take the next step. And we saw... We saw it against Purdue. We saw the Notre Dame defense kind of clamp down and slow that high-powered offense that Purdue had going so far down with only 13 points and one touchdown being seven of those 13 points. So now it's time to step up and do it against Wisconsin. Well, and you look you look specifically at their running backs. I mean, you know, you had Ches Malusi against uh, against Eastern Michigan, 20 carries for 144 yards, one touchdown. But it just go on the line down. A lot of guys are – putting up numbers you know uh isaac uh how do you say his name garendo does that look right to you yeah garendo garendo four carries 92 yards one touchdown jalen Berger, 15 carries 62 yards one touchdown uh braylon allen uh, uh seven carries 30 yards one touchdown so all these guys even the, the, the lowest guys in that group are averaging over four yards a carry but then Isaac Garendo for you know twenty three yards a carry. Malusi, the leader, seven point two yards a carry. So this is a team that really knows how to so how run to, the ball. And even then, in their receiving game, there were no touchdowns in that game, but very well spread out. Kendrick Pryor, four receptions, fifty four yards. Danny Davis the third, three carries, thirty yards. Uh, Shamir Dyke or Deke Dyke, D I K E, uh, three carries, thirty yards as well. Uh, Clay Cundiff, one one reception for eighteen yards. So, uh, Graham passed the ball. A little yes, bit. The, yeah. And I mean, when it, when they do pass, it's very spread out. Apparently, to all their to all all of the the receiving core. So, um, so we just we just got to be really ready to step it up on defense, especially in the trenches. Yeah. Well, That's and, the big and, thing. and speaking of trenches, the Notre Dame offensive line has to step it up in the trenches this week. You know, everybody's talking about this front seven for. Wisconsin and all that and how their defense is is potentially going to bully Notre Dame offensive line and if Jack Cohn wants to get his revenge and if Jack Cohn wants to have a game this is a situation where the line has to continue to get that push and continue to get better because Wisconsin is not a team that you can take lightly I mean yes I you think that they're overrated but anybody can beat anybody we've seen it I mean this year nobody really looks untouchable if, if you will, you know, even the un, the the undefeated teams that that are left in NCAA football, they've struggled at times. You know, they everybody has. So, gotta keep, stay on our toes, and we gotta get good offensive line production this coming week. Well, and at the time of filming this video, just the day after our game against Purdue that we, we were up there for, you know, Alabama had a little scare against Florida. Yes. So, really, yeah, it's it's shown that any team is beatable this year. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma's had its struggles. Ohio State's had its struggles this year, you know. So I, these bigger name teams, you know, are struggling for whatever reason. But what, so, what's funny about that is when we have our struggles, everybody only want, only wants to seem to focus on us. Nobody cares about what other blue blood teams are doing when they struggle. If, right. if they struggle, they get a pass. But us, we get criticized, even from our own fans. Yeah, which it's, is it's kind of sad. It's ridiculous. Because we're, we're not the only ones that have had a tough time getting things going here through these first three weeks. Yeah. And was that a Bears touchdown? Yes, it was. Hells to the yeah. <laughs> I love it. Who caught it? 
Uh, was it Robinson? Uh, I think it might have been Darnell Mooney. Or no, twelve. I think twelve is Robinson. Yeah, Allen Robinson with the touchdown. Yes. Well, I got him on one of my fantasy teams, so that makes me happy. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, I think what really what's going to ha- need to happen in this game against uh, Wisconsin is the offensive line has got to keep getting better. They started to get really better yesterday. Started yeah. to get the push. Still, still some some stuff to be worked on, but yeah, it's a step in the right direction. Yes, but we got to see we got to see what really happens when this line gets gets the holes open our running backs take advantage of it i would really also like to see chris tyree get going yeah and also what i'd really like to see too is tommy reese and his play calling get you know you have speed on the outside with your receivers guys like Lindsay and uh and uh, kevin austin take use that speed and take advantage of it yes throw downfield i mean we saw it with avery davis and, and jack Cohn hooking up it was beautiful. Yeah. That touch, that's what that's... we need to do. I mean, and if you can do it, do it. That was the frustration with the Purdue game was clearly Notre Dame could do that, and they didn't do it as much as they should have. So, I mean, if if we find out that watching this game that we can do this against this Wisconsin secondary and we have enough speed, then let's take full advantage of it. Yes. It's a no-brainer in my opinion. Ex- absolutely. absolutely, freaking lutely Take advantage with the weapons that you have. And offensive line, I can't say it enough. Keep getting that push up front. Yes, you get that push, we're going to be fine. We're not going to be struggling like everybody right. in our so many in our fan base thinks. You know, right. we have we have a good team here. We just got to get that push up front, and that'll allow us to run the whole playbook properly, Ben. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this offensive unit is is utterly fantastic and brilliant. And if the offensive line can get itself right righted and and fixed this Notre Dame offense can be extremely dangerous we're not even up to the full potential we can see from this offense so it's on the line in my opinion and I think too if if, you know they've been having Chris Tyree returning kickoffs give him if if it's there let him run it out coaching staff please if the kid the kid has all the speed let him show it yeah. on the kickoffs. I saw, um, and if you watch our videos, you'll know who you're, who you are. Uh, somebody on Twitter, I won't name names because you know not everybody wants their name out there. Um, said it absolutely perfectly about the whole fair catch thing. He goes, "Whoever the fair cu- catch coach is deserves a raise," and he's right. He's totally right. Like, what the hell? So, so yeah, you get props uh, to who who said that if you watch our videos. But yeah, I had I had to include that. Um, right, but yeah, no, I agree. It's it's frustrating. I mean, we got all this speed, and you can't. We're we're not getting it going. I mean, come on, that that's that's silly to me. That that's just ridiculous. So, and if it doesn't look like it's gonna pan out, we can always fair catch it. I mean, we have that new rule in place. It's not like you're gonna be stuck fielding a ball on the five yard line or whatever, and then oh shoot, we're stuck. You know, and then you get stopped. You can just go fair catch. We're good. You know. And I don't like what I'm seeing. And start at the 25. What's the difference? Just let the guy bring it out. Yeah, because so. Tyree has the chance to be the next rocket with his speed. But I guess and, that's and to be the, determined. Well, and then not even just being the rocket. Put the offense in a better field position. Instead of giving them the ball starting on the 25 yard line, if we could get a good return, get them started on the 40 or something. I mean, where what where's the the complaint in that? So exactly. I don't know. Well, Ben, nitpicking. We're just nitpicking. Yeah, I guess. I guess you could call it that. But it's like it's just stuff that we want to see bad. So we've come to that part in the video. It's uh, score prediction time, Ben. Yep. Now, so far through three games, and I think the last game against Purdue, we were actually kind of close. You were close. Well, I wasn't so close. Okay. Well, I guess you did pick what forty two thirty eight. Yes. I said thirty one twenty four. Um, Irish came close to getting theirs. You know, four. I was four points off in that one, but yeah. I, uh, I really thought that the defense would give up a little bit more against yeah, Purdue. Yeah, so did I. So did I. But it's so amazing that hey, we. Uh, I'll give. I, I will gladly take an L in that category if the defense steps yes. up and does that kind of work. So no, I'm not angry about that at all. Well, like I said, our score predictions have definitely changed from our season preview. But like I said, we have stuff to work on now, or, or, or work off of. I mean, yeah. to work off of. So I'll go first here. You know, I think this is gonna, definitely going to be another hard-fought game. I mean, you watch that first game of the season to get between Wisconsin and Penn State. That was a uh, scoreless. It was a dandy. It was a, dandy. Dandy. It was a defensive battle through the whole first half. No points scored. 
uh, was I think it was 16 to 10 was the final score in that. But I could see this going going not necessarily that route, but I think it is going to be a hard fought game. So if our offensive line can get the push, um, I think this is going to be another fairly close game because you can't you can't uh, throw out what the good things that Wisconsin does on defense as well. I mean, they have a great defense. Um, you know, their offense can have the firepower, especially in the run game. So I'm going to say 28 to 20 in this one, Notre Dame. Mm, I like it. I like it. We're just a, we're just a little bit different. I say um, Notre Dame 28, Wisconsin 14. So, so you, have two, you have a two point game, huh? Or a two score two game. game, two, yeah. two score game. I yep. Mean, yeah. Yep. All right. So we we're both on the same page here. Definitely could be a close game. I would love it if we stepped up and just blew oh, them out of the water. I would love to see 40 points. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. You know, I'll never complain about that. We blow them out of the water. Sweet. But we're I there. Just, I just got to go off with what I've seen so far. Yeah. Same here. And I hope, I hope to God I'm wrong. I hope there's improvement. So do I. So on that note, everyone, uh, one last thing I do want to let you all know. Um, ben and I got some footage from the Purdue game yesterday. We're going to be putting that together yep. in like a little documentary style, yep. kind of you know, kind of thing. Uh, so I'm not sure when we're going. When I'm, I'll, I'm going to start putting it together, but I'm not exactly sure when when we're going to release it. Maybe on our bye week. Yeah, probably that'd be a good week to to release it. So that way you you guys have some have some more material to look forward to. Because, you know, we, we want to try to keep, you know, the ball rolling. Yeah, we want to keep the ball rolling with the previews and recaps, spread it out. Because if, we, if we're releasing three videos in one week, you know, we don't have the, the kind of following yet to where we can just, you know, do video after video after video. We want every video to get its proper you know, attention. Yes, its proper attention. So be on the lookout for that probably around uh, Notre Dame's bye week or so. I forget when that is. But um, but anyway, that's all we have for you. And on that note, I am NB Sean 45 I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And as we always say, God bless. Good afternoon again in this case. And go Irish. Go Irish. Beat Wisconsin.